Welcome back Poke fans to the Pokemon Ash Adventures 2 Nuzlocke playthrough. If you haven't seen the previous parts, then go back and check them out. If you're just starting, then this fan game is based on Fire Red and the Kanto series, and we're doing it as a Nuzlocke to make it a little bit more challenging. So we're starting off with a rival battle, and this is our second rival, Sora. Um, she has the Squirtle starter. She's talking about how she's revived some fossils and come through Mount Moon. She's going to be a little bit challenging because the rival battles are a little bit. And she leads off with a Pikachu and we've got our Gyarados out who cannot take electric hits at all. So we're actually going to go and switch out into Dorothy. Hoping that it goes for the electric attack which it does. We then go for a Bulldoze which we get a crit and it takes it out in one hit. Next up comes her starter Pokemon, which is now a War Turtle. We can then switch out into our starter Pokemon, which is Jeffrey. And unfortunately for the War Turtle, it doesn't stand much of a chance. Getting the withdrawals up though means that it can tank a few hits. So we go for Leech, Leech Seed just to get some recovery. We then go for another Razor Leaf, which takes it into the red. We tank a Water Pulse, and with that Leech Seed recovery, we're pretty much fully healed take down this war tour. and then lastly she's got an Aerodactyl which we've actually got ourselves we just never went back and collected it which I might do at some point so we switch out into Gyarados to get off the Intimidate a little bit worried if it's got a rock move but thankfully it's only using bite at the moment and then Bubble takes it down to half and then we get flinched twice in a row and I'm starting to think to myself what's going on here it lives on minimal HP so we have to switch out because I don't think we can take another bite we go out into Susan and thankfully we get off a sucker punch which finishes it off after the battle she talks to us about how she didn't expect us to be as strong and asks us if we're heading on to Route 24 to meet Bill and she decides that she would also like to go and do and challenge us to a race obviously she heads off straight away but we need to go back and heal and then we've got a mammoth of trainers to take on so starting up with the first one of another bridge we've got Bugcatcher Doug and it's actually a double battle a Kakuna and a Venona they are lower level than what we've got though so we go for a bubble to do damage on both and then Susan's got Aerial Ace which takes out Kakuna in one hit. When I said in the last episode that Susan hits hard, now you know why. Another Aerial Ace takes out Venonat. After the bug catcher we've got Last Tasha and she's got a Clefairy and Pikachu. Again an electric type so Gary's not going to be sticking around. We switch out Gary for Dorothy and we go for a Hyper Fang on the Clefairy. Hyper Fang brings Clefairy down to red and we also get the flinch. Then we can go for a Bulldoze which is going to hit both and then we can switch in Zack. I was kind of hoping that it was going to take the Pikachu out but I forgot it gets split damage when there's two. So Clefairy goes down and Pikachu survives. We also find out that Gyarados learns Dragon Rage and it doesn't do base 40 damage anymore. It does whatever your level is, a bit like Nightshade. Zack also learns Wing Attack which is a bit of a damage increase. Thankfully Pikachu only goes for the Thunder Wave and we can finish it off with a Bulldoze. Because I think Zack might have gone down if he got hit by a Thunder Shot there. I also contemplated with Double Kick on Susan but I thought it weren't something that be that useful for us. So after Last Tasha we've now got Camper and Picnicker and they have Nidorino and Nidorina. Hyper Fang goes and misses and then this is when we realise that Dragon Rage doesn't do base 40. connect with the second Hyper Fang but we do get poisoned and that takes out the Nidorina. We then get another Dragon Rage off on Nidorina and Venishot does quite a bit of damage taking Susan into the red with the poison damage so we have to switch out and we go out into Dorothy. Bite just about isn't enough 
and now we can finish it off with a mud sling up next we've got cool trainer Hannah who has just a far fetch which is level 20 again this is a Pokemon that I wouldn't mind using it's not something I've really used before Karate Chop's not really going to be doing much to Gary though Air Cut gets the crit but still not even taking us down to half HP Dorothy wants to learn Sand Tomb here but I feel like Bulldoze is better and obviously Mudsling's priority and that's the fifth gym lead, uh, not gym leader, trainer of the Nugget Bridge so we actually get a Nugget she makes a little bit of a joke about giving us a potion but obviously a Nugget's better because we can sell it for money we then go to heal because we've still got quite a few trainers before we can make our way to Bill we also need to be careful because the level cap for Misty is level 25 I think and most of our Pokemon are I think level 24 so we can't afford to get over leveled we find a trainer over here who has a Charmander and he gives it to us for free I think it was Pokemon Yellow originally that did this so it's a paying homage to that we go ahead and give it the nickname Drew just because I feel like it fits a Charizard that's male normally I call him Draco but obviously we're going with basic names for this playthrough so Drew fits the bill and this will class as our encounter on this route we then find a super potion and as you can see this is route 24 and then we run into a battle here so camp at Elijah has an Ekans again a Pokemon that we previously had and lost we switch out into Dorothy who should be able to one hit KO this we tank a bite go for a bulldoze and without the intimidate on us we have enough attack power next up is Pidgeotto so we have to switch and we go out into Susan Susan tanks a mud slap and then Aerial Ace can't miss we do then go for a Hyper Fang and we actually connect I was expecting to miss that and now Susan is at the level cap and I think we've still got 5 maybe 6 more battles obviously we've already had our encounter for this route because of Charmander so we can't catch this Abra even though it would have been quite useful to have an Alakazam in this playthrough we do grab the item though which is Awakening and then now we're on another new route which is route 25 and we've got a plethora of trainers to take on so I'm gonna quickly run back and deposit the Pokemon that are already level 25 I actually thought you know what I'll go and take on the gym leader rather than having to worry and I for completely forgot that you have to go to Bill before you can get Misty into the gym so here you go we're running into the trainer battles so first up we've got Hiker Kent who's got a Machop not a good lead for Susan so we switch out into Gary who should resist all of his fighting attacks he does go for a Liat but we also got an Intimidate off as well we go for a Dragon Rage which does just under half Low Kick gets a crit which, so it did more than expected then another Dragon Rage takes it down next up comes Onyx which has no special defense it does have sturdy though so it survives on 1 HP and then Rock Throw does quite a bit but not enough and then the bike can finish it off we also realize that we've got an encounter here so we go ahead and get it and it turns out to be a bell sprout not the best but victory bell's not too bad it just it's a weaker version of our um, Ivysaur so we just throw a great ball and thankfully we get it on the first time we go in ahead and obviously nickname our bell sprout and I went with the name Clover I feel like it's a female name and it fits kind of flower sort of thing 
so Clover goes to the PC. We then go and grab the item here, which for some reason I couldn't get from the side, but it's an actual leaf stone, so we could actually get a victory bell as soon as Bell Sprout evolves. We then get the awakening and then we head into the other trainer battles we've got. So we've got Hiker Nob, who has an Alolan Geodude. This doesn't really stand a chance against Dorothy, and as you can see, I've had to go and swap my team up because of the levels. One Bulldoze though should take this down, but it does have Sturdy so it survives on 1 HP. We tank a Rock Throw and then Mudsling can finish it off. Next up is Sanshu, so we switch into Gary, who's one level away from the level cap. And Fury Swipes really doesn't do much. We go for a bubble, which takes it out in one hit, and that's the hiker dealt with. Drew learns Dragon Breath, which I think is a good move. It adds a bit of coverage. And then up next, we've got Picnic Kelly, who has Oddish. We lead off with Wendy, the Beedrill, and Bug Bite does just over half, and we also steal the berry. Then a second Bug Bite can take out the Oddish. Next, she's got a Nidorina, and it can't really do much to us, but we can't do much to it either. And we haven't really got anything to switch in because Dorothy's a little bit weak. So we go for Pin Missile to see how much it does, and it turns out it does more. So after a couple of pin missiles and us getting down to 19 HP, we take out the new arena. Drew then goes ahead and lands Metal Claw, which again is another coverage move. And two of our Pokemon are now at level 25. Drew then evolves into a Charmeleon, which is quite a big of an upgrade on a Charmander power-wise. He also wants to learn Fire Spin, but we've already got Fire Fang, so I don't see the point. Bell Sprout also evolves into a Weeping Bell because we use some of our EXP candies. And it's not going to be that useful for the gym because it's Poison type as well, so Starmie kind of wrecks it. But then Camper Chad has a Bell Sprout. And we lead off with Clover. We switch out into Drew and we get put to sleep straight away. I started thinking to myself, this is not going to end well for us, but thankfully, Razor Leafs really aren't doing much. And the AI just decides to try and paralyze us. One Fire Fang once we wake up takes it out. Wendy's also not the level cap as well. Next up's Nidorina. And the only thing we've got is Clover because Wendy's at the level cap and I didn't want to risk over leveling. Poison Fang does quite a bit of damage but thankfully we can go for a sleep powder because we're not going to be able to tank too many of them. We go for a razor leaf and it's resisted quite a bit. We then decide that there's no other option but to go out into Wendy and it turns out there's quite a bit before it can uh, get to level 26 and it's not likely that we're going to actually use Wendy in the gym battle. A couple pin missiles and Nidorino goes down. Zach also learns Air Cutter, which even though it does the same amount of damage as Wing Attack, I think the fact that it can hit dual, to dual Pokemon at the same time is quite a big difference. After the battle, Zack evolves as well, now turning into a Golbat, which is actually quite bulky. I didn't realise until recently playing with it that it can actually tank a few hits. So after that, we pick up the TM for Grassnut, which is perfect for the next gym, which is obviously a water type. We then head into Bill's house, expecting to see Bill here, but it turns out he's just his grandpa. He tells us that he's in the lab at the lighthouse, so it looks like that's where we're heading. So the lighthouse is a new area, it's not in the original Fire Red, I don't think. 
and in here we've just got some NPCs which talk to us about the lighthouse. This NPC mentions something in the basement making a static sound which to me means that there's a Pokemon down there. So once we've healed up we decide that's where we are going to go. Once we get down to the basement I just start clicking everywhere because I know there's got to be something down here. Not thinking oh it will be something obvious and then we see right in the corner once we click on it it says about a program and push a button and of course this turns out to be a Porygon this will be a pretty good team member because Porygon 2 and Porygon Z if it's in it are good Pokemon we get off a sleep pad it's put it to sleep and then we go for some razor leaves after two razor leaves it wakes up and we tank a side beam surviving on one HP. Did not see that coming. We then switch out into Drew and thankfully just goes for a shark. Man. We try for a great ball, hoping that we're gonna catch it because I think this is gonna do a bit of damage and it's not even close. Thankfully though it just goes for an agility and then we throw another great ball and we get it this time. Clover then learns acid which I think it's going to be a better move than Poison Powder. If it's toxic, then it might have been a different story, but Poison Powder being the same, damage every turn is not that, not that big really. We then go ahead and call Porygon Bill, seen as it's a computer and Bill designed the whole PC storage. After that, it drops a cell battery, which I'm actually not too sure what it is, so we go ahead and check it and it turns out it just means that if you get hit by an electric type attack it boosts your attack nothing too crazy after that we then head back up to the lobby where we can heal the team and then we've just got Bill left to look for so we head up to the lab floor and we see Bill with an EV turns out that he's experimenting with different stones and by giving an Eevee a shiny stone he turns it into a Sylvia. He then obviously tells you the different stones you need to get into different evolutions. We tell him that we've come here for information on legendary Pokemon. He introduces him and his friend as Pokemaniacs and he says that if you, we want to know any information then we've got to have a battle first. So we have to take on this Sylvia at level 24 as well so it's not exactly weak we go for an acid and I did not see a mystical fire and we lose another Pokemon not long after having it we then go out into Zack and Poison Fang hits gets the poison we do get hit by cute charm as well so now we're infatuated but thankfully we get another Poison Fang out and we get through a third time and finally take it down. That could have been a little bit troublesome if we didn't have Zach. But we did also lose a team member along the way. After that we can then head on and speak to Misty and we actually see Dragonite so this is a homage to the anime where you see Dragonite come to the lighthouse. Obviously Bill comes along and says that we are very lucky because they don't come here very often. After that he then Decides that we should battle Misty and she can now go to her gym where we can challenge her. Misty also says that she beat Bill not long ago in her trainer battle, which I didn't know before. But yeah, after that, we can go and pick up this item, which is a leaf stone, so another evolution item. And then we talk to this policeman here, and he has a squirtle which again is homage to Pokemon Yellow. We actually take the Squirtle off him, but I don't think we can actually use it because we've already had the encounter from this route, which was the Bellsprout. So this will more than likely just stay in the PC, which is why we didn't give it a nickname. After that, we get our team. In fact, no, we don't even get our team because we realize we can't go straight to Misty. So we keep the team that we currently had which have still got some levels and we go ahead and beat these three trainers 
so up first you got Swimmer Daisy with a seal. We start off with Bill. But the only move we've got at the moment is Psybeam. Psybeam does a little bit, but with flinches off headbutt, we're not going to stand much chance here. So we go for another one, take it down to the red. We can't take another attack, so we switch out into Zack, who goes for Icy Wind, which is super effective and drops our speed. We go for a Mega Drain, but she's got a berry that reduces the damage. Thankfully though it only goes for another headbutt and then Aqua Jet doesn't do much and we finish it off with Mega Drain. We also forgot to get rid of the Squirtle at the team so it's getting up a lot of levels here. I don't know why I went ahead and bother changing its moves. So up next we've got Swimmer Violet who's got a shelter. We lead off with Bill. We actually didn't mean to do this battle, it just happened as soon as we exited the other one. So we have to switch out into Zack. Thankfully though, Mega Drain can get all our HP back. He also has a Citrus Berry as well. And Whirlpool's not doing that much damage. So after an Ice Shard taking us down into the red, Mega Drain can finish it off. And then lastly, we've got Swimmer Lily who's got a Goldeen. And now that we've healed up, we can lead off properly with Bill. Aquajet doesn't do much, Psybeam does half. And then after tanking the horn attack, a second one takes it out. And that's all of them trainer battles done. So now we head back to the Pokemon Center and come back with our correct team. And Misty's not really something that's going to be easy. After looking at a team, I just didn't see a way of getting through this without losing something. So she leads off with Psyduck, which holds Eevee a light boost in its defense and special defense. So we lead off with Bill, and our plan is to just get a bit of chip damage with side beams. We do get confused off a of water pulse, but thankfully we hit through it. Then we have to switch out into Jeffrey because we're not going to survive another one. We tank a water pulse, we do get confused though. Thankfully we hit through with a razor leaf and we get a crit which takes it out. This then causes Misty to send out Starmie which absolutely wrecks everything. So we decide that Bob's the one that we're going to sacrifice. And we manage to get off just a quick attack for a little bit of chip damage before it goes down to a side beam. Now we can switch into Susan who is the only one that has a super effective move that can actually hit first because Sucker Punch gets priority. That takes it down to half. We then go for a second one, which brings it down to the red. A side beam brings us down to 5 HP. Orange berry triggers, and then we get another sucker punch off to take out the Starman. So her ace Pokemon's now gone. All that she's got left now is a Gyarados. And with Susan being on 17 HP, it's not going to last very long. So we switch out and bring in Gary, our own Gyarados. We got off the Intimidate, but it doesn't really mean much because Dragon Rage is stuck damage. We trade Dragon Pull, Dragon Rage is, she goes for Water Pulse, gets a Confusion. We still get off a Dragon Rage though. Water Pulse we tank quite well, but then we hit ourselves in Confusion. We do get an Iron Berry though, which doesn't really do much. And now we have to switch out. So we go out into Jeffrey, tank a Dragon Rage. She then sets up the rain, we reply with Razor Leaf, which takes it down to red. Dragon Rage takes us down to 20 HP. Orin Berry brings us back up to 30. And then thankfully we take it out with a Razor Leaf. And there you go, we've beat Misty and got the third gym badge, the Cascade badge. Fortunately we had to lose someone, but I didn't see any other way around this battle. She then goes ahead and gives us TRs for Flip Turn, which is basically... A water type version of U-turn. Next she says to go to Saffron which we obviously have to go anyway because we need to report to Locker after speaking to Bill. And yeah that's where we're going to end today's episode. Thank you everyone for watching and I hope to see you all next time. Peace out.